Or that's your style. Bam, ba, ba, ba. Yeah, I think I've actually, yeah. I think I actually know what you're referencing, but you know, let's, let's get a clean <laughs> start here for the VOD. 20 mm -hmm. minutes later. Yep. Three, two, one. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're here in the Alien Wear Arena Winter Finals. Year 2012 went by in a blur. Oh, we're going to get all the band champs on the right-hand side yet again. But you're listening to the League of Legends forecast here by the Forecourt Jester and the L3 IRD. The stream is the word of that Mr. Bird. And we're going to be bringing you all the epic action of these finals. Left-hand side, the Walter Tan Fan Club going up against Carried by Mundo. And Carried by Mundo are going to have some interesting picks and bands off of this one. Walter Tan Fan Club. We'll see if you ban out anything. Joking, yeah. The all the bands are coming out from the side. So technically, Lise was banned up by Walter's Tan Man Club. Caribbean Mundo picking up the Shen Van. We'll see the last band, particularly at the end. But yeah, it's gonna be like this, unfortunately, guys. So hopefully you can bear with us on that. I'm liking the bands overall. Lise, Shen, Nidalee, not so much. But I've been hearing from Alex that Nidalee is one of the best AP mids right now. <laughs> so he's that quick to abandon Evelyn after a round of nerfs, huh? <laughs> I mean, he, because there's so much poke, you get so much damage burst potential with Nidalee, and it's just a big, big bully just in lane. Twitch banned out as well. So yeah, definitely some different bands. Draven on top of things. <laughs> All right, who's the ADC here of the, of the Carried by Mundo guys? I want to see what his top ADs are. That's uh, interesting. That's real and Graves. Okay, that's well, clearly not him. <laughs> ban out the Twitch and the Draven. I wouldn't expect either. There's Nidalee well, and Elise. Yep. If you want to ban out one of them, I would have banned out Twitch more than Draven because Draven can get shut down really early. Last ban is going to be Lulu who been locked in for that one. So, I don't know. It's apparently Twitch Tremor. and Draven getting banned out. Stick out Trevor. Gun? Trevor, yeah. Games play Draven 30. So yeah, a few of those mm -hmm. bands actually hitting some of the top pick champions here on Carried by Mundo. So unfortunately, yeah, nothing strange to go down there. But yeah, very different bands than what we've been seeing. Now I gotta go hunting for the last one, Sona. She's right there. The last band is gonna be the Sona band. So at least Shen, Nidalee, Twitch, Draven, Sona. Thankfully, Mundo did not get banned, so they can continue <laughs> on. Yeah, I don't think Mundo's actually yeah, picked up first. Wow, that would be a strange pick to pick up from the beginning. But it's going to be sure now, PR being sure now. I'm expecting probably something safe like a jungle or support pick, but I mean, if it is going to be a Fiora pick, that'd be interesting to see. Mm, haven't seen a Fiora in a while. In fact, last time I faced a Fiora, I guess, was my normal game spree where we were going Thresh and Blitz. <laughs> it's a fun cheese lane. I got, I'll get some videos up later, but yeah, no VR. Instead, Swain. Hmm, interesting choice. Mm, yeah, I'm interested to see that as well. I mean, Swain's a really good utilized top or mid laner, just like Vladimir per se. But using Swain as a first pick, you usually see him as a counter pick to, well, said that Vladimir is such. Interesting wait, to see wait, that actually picked up. Wait. I have like 13, 14 bands here. One, two, three, four. I have five, a Lulu band. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I have twelve bands. It's it's a it's a Lulu band. That's that's a six six man. I only have six. I got twelve. <laughs> okay, so it's not Sony. It's Lulu. Yeah. Why do I have double the bands? It does that sometimes. The client. It does like these. Yeah. You know, and I can't explain it, it just usually happens and like you think it's banned, but it's not. Huh. And Holy Vengeance has a, yeah, it's been bugged for, like that for a while too. So strange, so strange. Okay, well, whatever. All right, so Lulu's the the sixth. Again, you know, pokey supports, blah, blah, whatever. All right, so Swain, pick up there. We got the Maokai Tarek now picked in. Once again, Tarek warranting a first round pickup by a team. And that's going to be responded here, Lee Sin and Leona. So we don't have any of the ADCs carry picked up quite yet, but very likely the jungle supports now solidify, unless we're going to go like all for Red and Lord with Leona. Ooh, interesting if they're actually going to lock that one in. I would well, we'd be surprised if they did pick up the kill with a, um, with a, uh, Okay, that's really interesting to pair that up with, and now we're going to be seeing the Ezreal. Ezreal, not surprised, as a first ADC pick, and especially because they banned out the, the Twitch, 
I mean, that's that's a, not a big um, difference maker. Having the Ezreal just play it really safe, not surprising. And the Kalox is getting locked in for carry by Mundo. I like it. It's it's interesting to see in that mid lane or the top lane per se, but I like it. This is actually, I think, the first set of games that we haven't had Kale actually banned out. Um, uh, I think he was was he banned out last last series. I'm pretty sure at least so. one game of last series he was banned out, uh -huh. if, if not both. But mm -hmm. I have to go back and refer. EU had a hard on for him as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did not get the chance to play there. Kazix was a total ban today as well, but he slipped through and did amazing in the mid today here on NA. So, uh, but yeah, I have been seeing you know some more people playing Kale. Kale top, Kale mid. Uh, you know, Dyrus, Reggie, mm, Strato, <laughs> right? Marco. <laughs> uh, sorry, Marco. Matt Marco. I was playing with him. He was doing some Kale top. Yeah, I mean, Kale has been a really good versatile everything. I mean, in Korea, they, you see him as support Kale, but it's pretty much just the counter to any melee, um, well, anyone in this melee that's in the mid or the top. He had that range for Asper Righteous Fury, so that's pretty strong. And on top of that, that intervention just does a lot of work trying to save somebody from that one second to two second shield. All right, last pickup. Come on, Tremor. Oh, it's going to be the Rumble. All right, so yeah. Malphite likely into the top. Same with that Rumble, though I guess he could be going mid. We're going to do a little bit of swaps around here. But Swain in the mid. Not somebody we've been seeing a lot of here in Season 3. It's been more traditionally uh, more of a high mobility AP or those high damage bruisers mid. But, you know, hey, going a little bit old school. Can't go that wrong. I mean, it could be also Malphite and then you never know. I mean, overall, those are the picks that could be played. Even though, on top of that, they have the least and could go mid or top as well. It'll be interesting to see. But yeah, Swain, mid or top, either way, it has been a while seeing this. I would like Swain probably to go against Rumble more than, if anything, the, um, the Kale. Because, yeah, he might have a, a little bit better of a matchup to go against the Yordle because, well... He is only melee in, in instances, so he had that against a swing, which can poke harass, get some good damage down, never move, and just get some kills. I would like to see that, but it's probably not going to be happening. <laughs> Uh, well, we will see. All right, so everything is now solidified in. We'll take a quick look here at the summoners. Cleanse on the ADCs once again. Tremor going to be down there up against I'm Kawaii Desu. Uh, so she's a cutie pie, pretty much. Our junglers again, Lee Sin and that Maokai. It does look like it's going to be a Malphite versus, I want to say Kale, but it's kind of a toss up. I don't know who's going to be going top between Kale or Rumble. I've seen them both doing it, but I'm, I'm leaning more towards Rumble. Yeah, Rumble's probably going to be going top against that Malphite. Kale's going to go against the Swin. I mean, they want to pair up the range versus range, and, well, the melee versus melee, so not a surprise to that, and I think Rumble's going to have a better matchup against Malphite. Same with Kale, just so much harass. Although, I think Zay's at level 6 is going to be able to re-sustain and get some good damage on that Kale. I'm taking a quick look at Kale as we speak. Armor, Magic Resist, Ability Power, Magic Pen... I don't know the same one, no, 22 and 7, so both Rumble and Kale running very similar builds. Uh, so yeah, it's, it really is kind of hard. I'm going to go with Rumble Tom uh, again, so let's take a quick <laughs> look at Tremor for his runes and masteries before we run out of everything. Let's put on, yep, that should be fine. Armor, Magic Pen, Crit Chance, I've been seeing more and more of this 0.93% stuff. Lifesteal bonus, 6%. From runes here for uh, Tremor and a little bit of physical damage on top of things. 19 0 11. So no defensive tree whatsoever. Um, not surprising with that. The lifesteal is going to get him wherever you can with the quints. And usually when you have lifesteal quints, you're probably going to be starting out with the Doran's Blade start. So that's not surprising. The uh, Butcher, which I learned from a lot of my teammates already, yeah, that doesn't really work in um, the sense of what you usually do unless you're doing jungle because that's the only thing it works on unfortunately not onto your uh wall lane minions per se hmm taking a quick look here at corky armor magic resist and physical damage 2109 as well for him so nothing in the defense we are going to be heavily relying upon the mobility factor of both corky as well as Ezreal and those cleanses to get them out of those 
sticky situation. Let's take a quick look at Malphite before we do close this section out. Armor, move speed, magic resist. We also have the dual resists on uh, the Maokai. I also noticed that a little bit earlier. And there we go. Nice defensive tree coming out from our Malphite. And a little bit into meditation and wanderer. Hmm. But there you go, guys. Everything is ready to go. Game number one, the Walter Tan Fan Club up against Carried by Mundo. Best of three series here on the Four Core Jester channel. And we're looking for that money. It's all about the monies. We're going to get kick this one off. Yep, and we're going to be starting this up again. Guys, Alien or Winter, there is a spring season coming up as well, so if you want to do, check that out, you might want to check out on AlienWearArena.com and then just check out the uh, LOL NA page for all the goodness and the events that's starting up. I think registration is actually starting up right now, so definitely get that in, and we're about to start this up for this best of, best of three. I also have some bad news about uh, the registrations. We're not having an EU season in spring it's only Ooh. na Ooh. so that means that uh, you know we're going to be covering pretty much just the na spring season so if you have any questions about that i'm going to refer you back to this vlog in the future but yes you are correct the spring signups are ready to go another eight weeks of league action and then of course the finals always a very exciting time yep we're gonna be starting this up again i'm quite desu for that quirky leeson on the ir i have our that's a StarCraft reference, I'm thinking. Secretarius on that Leona, Swain on Zays, and Malphite for Gucci Money for mm. Walter Tan Fan Club. What do we have for Carried by Mundo? Well, Tainted Monkey going top of that Rumble. Sorry, from, yeah, Rumble's going top. Uh, Kale in the mid, Nidori. So a little bit of an accent there. Harang. I, is that how you say it? Harang? That's all I'm going to be saying now. <laughs> well, you said he's from Tekken. I have no idea. But uh, Bloodstone <laughs> Tarek, uh, hardly fabulous and uh, dazzling, but at the same time, pretty fierce. Looks pr I, it's the best skin, in my opinion. But Festive Maokai <laughs> bringing out that cheer by Mirror and Tremor, who has pretty much his entire fan club in chat uh, from Frosted Ezreal. Yep, and I feel like Rumble in the Jungle is probably not going to be Rumble in the Jungle, but we're going to be top. Although... I feel like if a rumble was in the jungle, would you be scared of it? Rumble in the jungle. I have no idea. Uh -huh. All right. I think overlays are good to go. And my camera's good to go as well. All right. So we're going to kick off game number one here, guys. Going to take a quick moment here, sort out everything. And what are people doing, Mr. Bird? I'm thinking level one invade. Again, first game, you usually don't want to do it. But then again, Carrier by Mundo does have a pretty good engagement. Although Walter Tan Fan Club also has a pretty good engagement. You have Never Move, you have Zenith Blade, you have all the tons of time to CC down. And especially with Mirror, Blue Dependent, you usually want to deny that as well. So we're seeing Leona <coughs> ward out over there, over by the red, and they're going to be able to put some aggression on. Maybe Iyer is going to actually try to take onto Mirror during the red buff take. Well, I also noticed that uh, Ire of Aura doesn't actually have anything skilled yet. I don't think he wants to throw out that Q because he is going to have to go off into the jungle, picking up a Q first. Uh, typically, you pick it up second or third. Or some people, if they really, really want to go farm heavy, just won't get it until fourth. But, uh, yeah, we did throw out that one word up there by the red. And Corky just kind of chilling down here in the bottom. We do got Tremor and Horang, which is apparently how you say that, uh, <laughs> down there as well. So no invades, no real big aggressive statures. Everyone just kind of spreading out and defensing it up. And Tainted Monkey is more in the position to go top against the Malphite. Yep, and Tainted Monkey will go there. I think the biggest thing, they showed up really early, both Malkai and also Lisa knowing where they're going to go. The biggest thing is the war that's going to be spotted right by the race. Are they going to get aggressive on that, or are they going to go aggressive on the lane for Ire? Because I feel like one of the two has to happen, unless they just want to waste that ward and just know where Malkai is. 
So did Zayz actually get... No, okay, so Zayz didn't actually get any of those uh, wraiths. I thought he was just going to start those off. Uh, and now bottom lane, of course, we did pick up the golems, and now we're going to be helping out. Given a smiteless red, Ire of Aura should be in good position to go straight into a counter jungle or go straight up to the blue for a counter jungle. We've been seeing this before in other matches, both NA and EU. You'll get the quick red smiteless for a counter jungling type, and then you just go straight up there. And, you know, Mare is very dependent upon blue. If we can rob him out of that red, you know, he's just going to be that much less scary. And I think that might actually be the plan because we do have that ward there. We can see Mare in and amongst the things, so Ayer's going to set up for this gank. Yeah, Mare is just going to be none the wiser onto this, and unfortunately, this is going to be a bad time for Mare. He's going to start this up, and I don't know if there's going to be smite selling, but here we go. Mare is going to start up, and you know, going <laughs> to nice on Ayer. Yeah, he's gonna. Wow, well, we actually got the Q there. He's gonna land some big auto attack damage on top of uh, our Maokai. It will stop him from getting that red. Now, we do got that ward there for any kind of juking purposes, but Nidori coming up from lane as well. Swain following her like a good mid should. And uh, I think he's just really gonna play Havoc here with Maokai. Oh, they're gonna see if there's a sapling toss. So, great thing that Mirror did, he actually started off taking his red but it made sure that he got some bush control so he can actually set that off. The other big thing was Nidori really defending against that invasion did not want to get that Zayz actually into the position where they could have gotten a gank. But there we go, now top lane. We'll see if this uh, is going to come into fruition. Tainted Monkey kind of on the wrong side of things. Flashes out, looks for the kill on top of Malphite. Isn't going to be able to grab it, but is he? With that flamethrower, he's going to go in real hard. Who's going to get the first blood? It will go to Ire of Aura. Or ire, ire of Ire. Oh, wow, I just got that now. Ire <coughs> of Ire. But uh, Gucci here. Gucci? Gucci. It's Italian, right? Gucci? Either way, he yeah. survives to live the day. Really nice kiting out there. Uh, and I, I could have almost sworn that this was a red ward, but apparently it is not. Yeah, I'm fortunate that they did have the ward level now over there. But the biggest thing was, yeah, Rumble played that a little too aggressively. Yeah, he was going to get the kill probably onto Malphite until the point where Lee Sin actually came up. And there was no... Okay, there was probably a 20% chance that he could have gotten the kill, but Lee Sin still had safeguard to oh, Malphite, and Malphite would have been fine even though. So I feel like if Rumble played that really too aggressively, and having Malphite have just a little bit of an advantage is going to hurt this Rumble during the lane phase. Mm, yeah, could be. Ire of Ire going to be taking uh, some big damages there in the jungle, but he should be okay. Gucci now back up top, up against the Tainted. Uh, we did have Zayz actually dropping a little bit too low there in the mid, but he's potted up fairly nice. He also has a flask. You don't really see that that often anymore uh, with the Crystal Eye flask ever since the nerf a few patches ago. Yeah, that's pretty interesting to see, but it's still very viable and, and very useful. Oh, Gucci Money could have actually, you're, you're right, there was no shield for that Lee Sin, unfortunately. But once he did get the level up from the kill, it was the shield just to finish up. So, not surprising over on that one, but yes, I guess 40% more. It's just unfortunate that the Electro Harpoons didn't hit up for the Rumble to get the kill over there. Bottom lane, we're going to see some action. Secretariat is taking a little bit of damage. Yeah, and the big thing here is that Tremor has actually used out that cleanse. So if we have Lee Sin come down here, it could be a surefire kill. A little bit low on mana as well, but Sagittarius has dropped, I think, a little bit too low in the health department in order to actually force anything out. Now, we might have a lane gank coming in here from Ire of Ire, and that is not going to be a worded bush, but they do got to kind of rebuff this entire creep wave, and it's <laughs> going to take a little bit of time. That's going to be some lost time as well. Now, can we see Ire of Ire in the fog? No, we don't think we actually have any idea that he's there yet. And he made it into the bush without actually being caught. Wow. Brilliant. That's certainly the first battle. Sagittarius still has to land a good Xenoflade and can't be on Tark, but they're going to go try to go for this on Tark. Tremor and Harang should know that that it is kind of a tell. There is no way they should be playing this aggressively, especially with how much health that they actually have. Yeah, Nidori actually dropping a little bit low, but top lane tainted Monkey. Uh, did he just get hit by that unstoppable force? Yes, he did. And Gucci with that quick level 6, able to take the advantage in that top. So 2-0 for the Malphite. Okay, I lied. 1-0-1, but either way, it's 2 kills to 0 deaths 
for Malphite, and uh, he's feeling pretty good about that top. Now, we did have Mare in and around the mid as well. He was looking for a gank, did not find an opportunity. He will defend this top lane as uh, Gucci is going to be heading back, and... When are we going to get that bottom lane going? Here's the Ire of Ire looking for it. Does land it on top of Tremor, but he's a little bit too far back into uh, that tower. A nice Q coming out as well. A little bit of harass. Foster's Bomb going down. Gives you the vision of Horang there as well. But it does not look like we can grab a kill out of this one. Here comes Kale as well. Yeah, Kale's going to come out in bottom lane. Ire didn't spot that one out. So that's the ward spotted that one out. So they're just going to back away from this. I mean... I feel like Quirky and Leona could probably get converted on the rank, but they would still be in a kill onto there for both teams. So probably the best of ideas, but I feel like at least in starting out that gank, it wasn't going to really connect in. So I don't know why he kept on going for that, especially with Quirky and um, Leona being so low. And yeah, speaking of low, they've headed back to town. Tremor, however, still farming away like a boss, taking a decent creep lead here. Does have himself with that Doran's Blade, now 60% lifesteal, uh, at least at added lifesteal. That brings him to uh, 8%. <laughs> 8%. Wow. All right, yeah. And there's the true shot barrage. So they're just going to push this one in, head back home for their own shopping. I think Kale has blue. Yes, she does. She's going to mm -hmm. head on home as well. Swain, uh, come back to lane. He does have himself the Chalice of Harmony. D uh, uh, last I checked, Kale's are AD hybrids. Yes? Uh, no, they can go AP as well. Oh, and that's exactly what Kale's doing. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Okay. The more you yeah, it's going to go double Dorans and then ramp up to the Nash's Tooth, which is actually interesting. I like to see the Shusei version where just go Death Cap and then just go all damage with your, uh, well, respite. Yeah, this is not Tainted Monkey's lane. Three-man gank coming up here. Unstoppable Force going into the kill, or at least the attempted kill. Equalizer comes out, forces out the Flash and uh, the Ignite from Gucci. Oh man, if he had stayed in that tower range, one more shot would have been an equal trade. Really nice uh, scrap shield there at the end from him, keeping himself alive just that much longer. But still, our poor Tainted Monkey is now sitting at 0 3 zero. One thing about Rumble in the lane phase, before 6, um, you can do so much damage to him if you just get off one gig gank on him. He is very, very bullyish, but if you actually bully him back with a gank or something like that, it's just game over for him because he is pretty eye independent as well. Zay is going to be pretty eye independent, trying to get out of here. Secondary is coming off from the side. The mirror is looking for the kill. Oh, Zayz is going gonna, is gonna to drop. That was a flash from Nidori. I'm not entirely too sure she needed to flash for it. It was a good attempt there by Sagittarius to, to keep him going. But, oh, she's going to walk right into a Tarek. Nope, Horang's actually going to walk the other way. The ADs down here are also doing a little bit of a duel. They're down about half health each. But either way, three for one right now as the Walter Tan fan club have taken a little bit of a lead this early game. Yep, and we're looking at the Ire. Is he going to be setting up for an early dragon? No, he's going to go, go over the KL, probably take out level 6 for himself, or go over to two, um, Raves and do that. But no, he's going to go over the KL and be able to take some harass, but get level 6 off on that. Really good take for Ire, who is now in a good position to do some more ganking. Unfortunately, Mirror, at the same point, is at level 7. It's going to make all these plays with his Malkai. Yeah, I definitely need to hit those sixes as soon as you can. And yeah, Lee Sin now finally joining the club. But sevens and eights abound. A Shatter Dazzle combo on top of Sagittarius. Forces out the shield. No Zenith Blade coming out for it. So she is going to go ham. Uh, she is going to be down at least one useful tool. I think that was just kind of the idea. Now we do got Kale hiding behind the lane. And she's going to come into here. Kawaitis, who immediately Valkyries out. And a nice stun comes down from the Sagittarius. Now here comes the counter uh, teleport from Gucci. But but uh, not finding an opportunity to make use of it. And this could be exactly what uh, Tainted Monkey wanted. But hey, whatever. Tremor's staying ar sticking around. Gucci does not care. He's just going to go right on in. He does have himself that ultimate ready to go. Sagittarius is going to be dropping low. It looks like she'll be okay. But will Gucci actually get out of this one? Uses the Unstoppable Force at the last moment. But Tremor with the long-range Mystic Shot able to slam that one home. Now they're going to get caught out here by the Nevermore. Zay's trying to just do his his best. He tried to come down to help, but unfortunately he's just getting three men attacked. Nice exhaust coming out, putting him down as well. Nidori looking very strong with this KO combo. 
Yeah, that was just unfortunate again. Bot lane for the team of Walter Fan Fan Club. Just too low to really support. So when Zayz came in to try to support, he was actually out of position and got picked off from the exhaust. Great job by Radiance picking that up as well. Harang just doing some great, great work over there. But overall, it was the kill initiate and also the Malphite just uh, questionable teleport because that also gives Rumble a little bit of free time to free, free, free farm back up, which what you said. Well, as I said, you know, when you take that teleport, I think it was Kobe saying it on the LCS, you expect to lose that lane, or if you do come out ahead, you have that teleport for the global advantage, and unfortunately just did not seem to be used to uh, perfection right there. So better luck next time, Gucci. Tower uh, did not go down, I don't know why I said tower, but Dragon is certainly dead in the water, and that means that all of a sudden we have a gold lead now accrued for Carried by Mundo. And carry by Mondo with that 2k gold lane. It's going to be buying some good items. Really interesting to see this Ezreal build up a build order cutlass with the Doran's Blade. Where is he going with this belt? Is he going to go right to Blade and Rooting King early for his first item and then just ramp up to later game? Well, there's only, I remember that he. I think there's only two items it can go into, right? Right. Yeah, and that <laughs> and also the Hexagon Blade, unfortunately. Um, unfortunately, he yeah. adds. Unfortunately, because, yeah, it could be AP, AD, hybrid, Ezreal. Yep, could be. I've seen worse. I've seen Glacial Fist first item, 15 kills later, paid itself <laughs> off. Um, yeah, you can really do a lot with these. I'm going to say, yeah, Blade of the Ruined King. I'm going to agree with you there. I mean, he did start off really interesting with that 6% lifestyle in the beginning, so now he's like at 8, and wow, Secretary is barely missing off on his end of play. If they got that, they probably could have instigated the Tremor. Yeah, it would have been nice. It would have been a nice pickup because the Tremor's up 101. Corky hasn't died, hasn't actually contributed to a kill either, though, and is a down in that CS. So overall, the gold difference between them, just a little under 1,000. So that's going to be, you know, majority of that first item pick of it's really going to determine who gets it first and but yeah bilgewater cutlass not even boots yet for ezreal either and ezreal is going to be taking blue out of this as well uh, it's going to be uh ezreal's game score that's going to be there but they lose the bottom tower for that as well interesting to see what walter dan fan club is going to be doing i mean they do have some global pressure but they are still down in gold so they need to keep up with this CS thing and they'll be fine. The only thing though I would say, yeah, I, I don't know where the damage output's going to be coming from in the next three to four minutes. Although Walter Tan Fan Club also needs to farm up as well, so they're going to have to just hold off while they can while carry by Mundo. On the other hand, they, they're, they're going to have a fun time pretty soon. Now, chat's saying that uh, Tremor doesn't normally build into a Blade of the Ruin King, but I'm going to slam it in their faces because <laughs> we have a Blade of the Ruin King picked up. <laughs> that's just the confidence or on top of that. I mean, there is a lot of healthy people. Yeah, that's Wayne. Yeah, then um, Lisa, and you do have Gucci Mani with that Malphite. All three of them do prohibit to that Blade of the Ruin King passive, so that's pretty smart. I don't know if that's really the early thing that you should do, but you also have on top of that Quirky with that Phage, so that's going to proc up as well. Overall, I feel like, yeah, they, he still could have just gone Bloodthirster first and got the same results and still ramped up later, but it's going to really work out well in the later run. So Mare was kind of hanging around this top, maybe looking for an opportunity, not going to find one. We also got Ire of Ire in here as well with Zayz. They're going to get the never move on top of Nidori. Nice flash coming in here with that Zenith Blade. Pops in vulnerability, but Nidori is going to be able to flash on out of the ultimate from Leona. Not going to get caught out here. She should be able to live to see another day, but she is going to have to trade off for the tower. Here comes Mare, maybe going to try to save it, but no Vengeful popped. In fact, it's just the sapling, and now they're going to rotate top. Uh, the swap, however, here is that Tremor has now taken the bot tower. So we've evened up uh, the tower exchange. They're still down one, but here goes that top pain train. Yeah, and then Ari is still pretty low from that, and also uh, Tainan has to play it a little bit passive. Oh, I are going to go in for this engage. Don't think they're actually going to start it up, though, and we're going to see the back away for the team. I think all they want to do is just take this turret really fast and just take all the tier one turrets down. 
Yeah, Tremor and Horang, they're making their way up here, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Down goes the turret, 3-1 to one for the count, but now comes the counter-offensive. Sapling going in, forcing them not to head on back to town, but we didn't actually have a follow-up there from Mare. Who is he going to be able to catch? It will be I'm Kawhi Desu, but a great Valkyrie puts him out of position. Cannot deal with that. The Vengeful going down, the unstoppable force on top of Nittery. We do have that invulnerability back up. The True Shot Barrage also been out and about, but Mare going to go down for the trade off on top of Swain. We still have a tower there, but I don't think we actually care as Leona's going to drop. Tower almost taking down that uh, rumble, but it looks like he's going to be able to get away out of this one, but it will not matter. The ace comes out, five for three exchange, and uh, maybe that's what happens when you put all your eggs in one basket top lane. Um, yeah, they took a little bit of damage from that, but the biggest thing was the greatest start of the engagement, and then having the Vengeful Maelstrom mitigate a lot of the damage that was coming onto the front line and team of Carry by Mundo. On top of that, the, uh, the Quirky, yeah, we haven't talked about him too much, but he's been pretty denied as into damage output. Like, he hasn't been effectively putting out that much damage, and that's kind of why Quirky's at the tier 3 status that he is right now. I mean, yeah, he still has Miss Barrage, and he can still have that long-range poke, but with the ineffectiveness of Trinity Force right now, it's just not the same anymore. Kawhi Desu coming into the spot lane does have that phage, but yeah, the damage is, is kind of not there. I mean, Trinity Force did get a slight buff, as in it only costs three gold to combine it, thus making it a bit of a cheaper item, but I don't really see that many people still opt to go for Trinity Force first. It's because Phage is just not reliable anymore. I mean, you have Iceborne Goblins just does the same thing and does a little bit better good stuff. And then also on top of that, you have Armor and that Sheen Prox still as well. I mean, that's just one thing. On top of that, Trinity Force is just, you know, it's just expensive in the sense that Zeal is a really expensive item right now. Phage is a really expensive item right now. And Sheen's still the same. But those two items alone are things that Corky really needs at the start. And having him, well, still build into that, plus build into the Vamp Scepter, I mean, it's not questionable. I mean, it's a good item build and item choice, but overall, it's really ineffective where Tremor is right now, especially with that BS sword add on to, well, the Blade of the Rune King. A really good prediction there by Horang, throwing down that purple ward, does deny out that vision, and uh, Kale kind of doing guard duty up and above this dragon. Dragon is going to go down to Maokai, but a great unstoppable force catches at least two of the Mundos, and now the big team fight going to Mera is in the front line. He is going to be dropping, but it is again going to be that trade-off for Swain, but the double kill comes out here for Munda with that tower under the belt. The flash arcane shift from Tremor looking for the kills with his Qs, does have the red, does have the blue, does not grab that last one. Gucci on the run as well, but he is not going to be able to outrun all four team members of the Mundos, and uh, that is not going to be an exchange that the Walter Tan fan club really wanted to do. It was just really dirty to see Tremor actually just life sustaining through all the turret shots that was taken from mid, just because he was still getting procs off onto the uh, off fight. I'm liking the Tremor build and I'm liking the play from Carry by Mundo. They're just taking advantages and then making sure that Vengeful Maelstrom pretty much mitigates 100% of the DPS that they would have taken if they just got bursted on from the beginning. So one thing Walter Tan fan club has to do, they have to wait on using up that Maokai um, ultimate. Like we saw in the last game, I mean, if you have Vengeful Maelstrom down and you actually engage in, you'll do all your full damage and on top of that you don't really have any mitigation. When you have it up, like we've been seeing before, Walter Fan Fan Club just hadn't had that much DPS to actually come onto the team of Carry by Mundo. And Carry by Mundo is just taking advantage of it every time in each of these fights. Now, to their credit, 20 minutes in, our Leeson has actually fi finished up a Locket of the Iron Solari. So, some decent health and armor, and the cooldown, of course, with the grantable shield. There's math done on it uh, a little bit ago by Diff the Ender, and pretty much, you know, it situates. It's situational, but a locket pretty much wins out most situations against an Aegis. And then, of course, you can just double your fun by getting both. But, yeah, we've been seeing a r big resurgence of locket, uh, especially in Season 3 b with the new changes to it. A lot of people just really enjoying the usefulness that it brings to a team. I think in, there's a Reddit post about how the effectiveness of, well, effective HQ with shield and stuff like that. That locket's 
like ten times better than Aegis right now, mm-hmm. and just how it is right now. But you know, Aegis is a patch- passive; it'll keep on going. So usually, the best thing I think the Reddit post said, and also what I agree with, lock it and having a Aegis in between that would really help you out as a team. Just having those auras and then that shield at the end—it's just a beautiful, beautiful way to well win out fights. So. I'm hoping there's going to be a lock and beam meld off from the team of Carry by Munda, but then again, they don't really need that. They have the effective well, HP and effective armor for themselves, and they're going to be okay into the next few fights. Well, Ho-Rang here actually does have himself up that Aegis, so it is, you know, the battle between the two, see which one will come out. But, of course, with Ho-Rang, he also has himself that uh, Shatter. So the Shatter passive is uh, 30 armor on top of that, so it effectively doubles uh, <laughs> well, more than doubles the, the Aegis of the Legion, but, mm-hmm. you know, he can also build, build that into a runic, very popular for some of these big team fights. So, other things in and around the place, Tremor with all that farm under his belt, 406 and 168 creeps. After that, Blade of the Rune King gets himself an Infinity Edge at a 22-minute mark. That is very good. Oh, Zay's in, in trouble with that Q proc. Oh my gosh, the burst damage coming out from Nidori as well. Tremor's just trying to try to catch up and unfortunately not going to get there with his mix of shot. But a very, very good little skirmish makes them burn out a flash and Swain can't do anything yet again. Yeah, poor Swain. I'm very curious about what the strategy behind this Swain is. As chat saying, you know, he's not really bringing that damage. Now Gucci flashing, not going to be flashing over the wall. Has to use the unstoppable. After that, there's the ward and the stun from Ho-Rang. Out goes the arcane shift as well. A very expensive escape that did not pan out at all. And Tremor now going unstoppable here 22 minutes in. 506 picks up some more kills. Could go for this Baron, but they just wasted a ton of ultimates and flashes and such. So they're probably not going to go for it. But yeah, at this point, I mean, they're only 5k up, 6k up. Yep. Yeah, Five. 6, 5k up, whatever. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it's not that big of a lead, so they could still turn this around. I feel like, if anything, Carried by Moon is just baiting out so they can get more pickoff kills onto the team of Walter Tank playing up. Yeah, I mean, we we talked about this in previous games. When you're this far up, you don't really have to risk a Baron. Like, if they can for sure kill it, sure. But they can also use it as a powerful baiting tool up against, uh, you know, a more desperate team. Right now, Walter Tan could be coming up to that level of desperation where they're going to need to try for that Baron in order to kind of turn this stuff around. But, hey, they're on the defense yet again. Five-man push coming down this mid. Very reminiscent of the EU games that we were playing earlier today. But still, even after those never moves, so we're not seeing any kind of follow-up here from the Walter Tan. So they really are just kind of stuck on defense. And if you're stuck on defense, it means that uh, your enemy team has you pretty much back against the wall. And they have a lot of poke on top of that as well. You have the sapling toss, you have the mystic shot, and you have tons of damage coming away from this Ezreal that's just coming into play. So overall, I like what's going to happen right now. Oh, Corky going to get you oh. a little bit of early stand. So unfortunately, you're going to still get caught. Yeah, he's going to have to burn that flash to get on out of that one. Tremor not going to be following, still throwing out those cues. He almost has permanent blue buff uh, for these last few fights. I've noticed that uh, they've actually been taking blue buffs, not only on their side, but as well as the Walter Tan side. Uh, but had they actually not revealed themselves, there's absolutely no vision in that bottom lane. I really did expect an insta-give Korki if he did come down a little bit too far, but I feel that uh, Carried by Mundo jumped the gun at that opportunity, but they did get a flash out of it, so it's not all for not. Yeah, they might get this tower, but they might be engaging with Gucci Mani. This might be a little bit too deep. Yeah, Gucci's kind of uh, wandering around in there. Zay's taking some big damage here from Nidori. There goes the invulnerability after the dragon kick from Ira of Ira, so she's going to be okay. Now Gucci just kind of has to hoof it back. The last Q from Tremor will be able to pick it up. He's going to be able to arcane shift out of the Zenith Blade combo and kills, kills, and more kills as we get the double now. Nidori able to take down Zay's, and again, not the best of exchanges as we go four for one, and it wasn't Tremor. I mean, they waited, and they waited for the the Malachi to not do anything. Unfortunately, yeah, they didn't go, well, wow, they're going to surrender out. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, Tremor was just too much of a beast during this game. Great positioning from him, and great great positioning from the team from Carried by Mundo. Cleanse, Flash, Arcane, Shift. He had himself that lifesteal with the Blade of the Rune King, plus another slow on top of red buffs, on top of... 
everything else. Objective control was very strong there by carried by Mundo, and that got themselves into a fantastic position for a 25-minute win. I gotta say, that Tremor man, if I ever met him in a dark alley, uh, consider me scared. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching, esports fans. If you want to see more video game commentary, make sure to hit the subscribe button and check out these other commentaries.